at what you have in your kit. You should have one half butterfly frame, the other half of the butterfly flame, flame, frame. <laughs> The other half of the butterfly frame, a bag of dangly bits, one big spool of 26 gauge wire, one length of 22 gauge wire, a strand of beads for half the butterfly, and a strand of beads for the other half. They're identical, and we're going to leave them on the strand until we're ready. And last but not least, you will have this instructional printout. This will have a life-size photo of a finished butterfly sun catcher so that you can see the bead placement and compare bead sizes. And my <laughs> <laughs> tools needed: chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters, something to weigh down this giant spool of wire when we unwind it. Oh man, I didn't put it on my under my book. And now it's all okay. Well, so something that you're not going to have to lift so that you can keep this loose spool weighed down. You know, we cut. We totally recommend. We don't recommend. Recommend let let. <laughs> <laughs> a plate. I would also recommend a dish. I'd also recommend a dish, actually, to hold your loose components and your beads in so they don't get jostled and you don't lose anything. Fantastic. <laughs> First, we are going to wrap the beads onto each half separately. We will be working in segments, and then we're going to do the other side, and then we will join the two sides together. And then we connect the hanging part, and we're done! All right, let us begin! We're going to wire wrap the wings, but before we do that, you're gonna grab your beads, and before we do that, you should go wash your hands. It removes any of the natural oil, it'll make your sun catcher that much more pretty. While you go do that, I will be unwrapping my beads, and we'll be here when you get back. Go, go, go! Okay, so we have a few color offerings here. These are actually all based off of real butterflies. So this is a blue morpho, a monarch. These two are limited edition, one of each. Once they're gone, they're gone. So this is a purple emperor butterfly and a scarlet peacock butterfly. Don't worry, the steps are the same for every color scheme that we have come out with. The one I'm going to be working on today is this rainbow one. So, these strands are identical, but it is important which side you start on. So we are going to start on the side with the 6 millimeter bead, and we will need this. This is 26 gauge wire. Just be aware that as soon as you unravel and let go, it might just spring out like a... Um, what are those things called? <laughs> Slinkies! <laughs> okay, I'm going to straighten that. That wasn't my era. We didn't play the Slinkies. We have video games. <laughs> so. <laughs> I never realized how boring it must look now. It's like watching kids watch a spring yeah. go down some stairs. Like yeah. <laughs> You're like, look at the physics. Can you believe Slinkies? <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your printout. And for this first segment, which is going to be. I never got mine to go downstairs. Yeah, me neither. Okay. So, if this helps, this is going to be really good. This is like a football pl play or something, but we're going to start here with this blue. Number one, section one is start never here. A football game in your life. No, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> section two, we're going to start wrapping here and then stop right there. And then section three, we're going to start here and then go around and end right next to where we started. And then the last two parts, four and five, is we're going to connect right here and then we're gonna connect right there. Well, you know, after we do the other side. So we're gonna repeat this on the other side. So right now, let's start with this length. We will need four, about 14 inches. That's probably gonna be some extra length because I would always rather have too much than run out in the middle of wire wrapping. That really sucks. So go ahead and if your spool is loose like this, just unwind a bunch. And a standard sheet of paper is 11 inches. So just hold it at one end. It doesn't have to be super exact. Hoopers. You're gonna hold it at one end, go to the side that's 11, and then go back to this side. And then four inches is probably like a third, close to a third. So we're gonna, whatever. <laughs> okay, let's go a little further. <laughs> A little further than the fold. Oh, okay, yeah, so you could end it like right there. And if your thing looks like it's staying, your spool, maybe you don't need the book or whatever. Ah. But I was just worried that it was gonna go crazy and I guess this is still tangled, isn't it? And then 
you know, be unmanageable. Stop. <laughs> so go ahead and wedge this under whatever book or thing you have so that it stays, it behaves. Okay, so now that we have a length of wire, let's grab our strand of beads and we're gonna start with the non-teardrop side. So this side has a little teardrop. We're gonna start on this side. So go ahead and open up this end. Just be very careful because this is not a hard stop here. So if you pull on these beads this way really hard, this end will just flip open and then all your beads will come shooting out and that would be bad. So when you undo this, there might be like a little kink that prevents the, the beads from sliding through. So if you see it, just try and kind of crimp it with your chain nose pliers here to have a flat inside. And then once you have it open, just set it somewhere safe so that you, that you don't lose anything. I like to put it on my dish. Okay, and then you're gonna grab one, si one frame. FYI, the shiny side, the really smooth polished side is the front, I guess, or I mean, it doesn't really matter, but the other side is the hammered side. It's kind of more matte and has some more hammered accents and stuff. So I'm gonna do shiny side. So I'm gonna start with this right side of the butterfly. We're gonna take our length of wire and begin right here. So I usually start by making a little bend like this. You can see it and then hooking it like that, folding it over a segment of the frame. And then I brace that little length and then wrap that around. And then I will push the longer side of the wire. I will actually push it through like that and do one more wrap. And then I will flip that over and secure it. So this is how I do a beginning wrap. I'll do wrap, wrap about four to five times. Uh, you don't. You never want to use your hands when it's this short because the shorter the thin wire is, the more needle-like it becomes. So, and then we're just going to keep folding over and gently press down with our pliers and then kind of rotate it around. Okay, and then if we need to, you can scoot it with your nail closer to that flared end. And let's take our first. Crystal. And we are going to. So notice right now the wire goes over the frame. So I am going to go under and then wrap around where it goes across like that. And if you need to rotate, flip your frame upside down and stuff, that makes it a lot easier. So same thing, I push the wire through and you wanna pull snug, not so tight, but just make sure it's taut enough. And then we're gonna go around and around. When I am wrapping with no beads, like for this section, I usually will kind of do the wraps further apart. And actually, I forgot this part is open, so we don't have to always push the wire through the frame. You can actually just pass it through there and then press in here and pull it taut and then you can go like that. Yay for shortcuts. will start. So you're going to take your next bead. It should be a little one. Some of the color schemes may vary just slightly, so whatever next bead is in your bead strand. So for these, these have a kind of a diamond shape if you can see. So the middle section flares out with point and then there's a flat two flat sides so you kind of want to angle the bead so that the flat side rests against the frame so this is really easy for me 
I found the easiest way is, oops, if you angle the wire, find an angle where the bead will just kind of whoop, naturally rest against the frame. And then when you find a good angle like that, just hold, sandwich the bead and the frame in your fingers like this, and then just start wrapping the wire around. And then once you have one wrap, then you can let go. Then it's not really. And if you don't get it perfect, it's totally fine. It's not the end of the world. It's just if you pull really tight and it's rest, the pointed end is resting against the frame, it could chip your bead a little bit, which is also fine. But I'm just worried about little pieces of glass hiding around your table and things like that. So just be careful. So if you see here, so if I had the wire going straight up like this, then obviously that flat side is not facing it, but if I tilt it, now you see the flat edge is pretty parallel with the, with the frame, so then I will sandwich it in my fingers there and do a single wrap, and now it is locked in place. And you can also scoot things around if, you, if needed. So we're going to put the next crystal on, and then I'm just going to find that angle so that the bead, the flat face of the bead rests against the frame. And then we're gonna, oops, we're going to wrap Do the next, same thing with these little ones. These little ones can, might be a little bit tricky because they're s kind of small, but as long as you're not pulling so tight, I'm sure it'll, everything will be fine. You don't want it so loose where your bead's kind of flopping around either, though. I mean, you could. It doesn't really matter. No big deal. Oops. Oh, oh it's a scary. <laughs> All right. And we are getting to the big bead. So now, instead of... We've been wrapping on the outside of this curve here. We're going to put the big bead right here in the middle. The next crystal is this gorgeous, well, they call it Aurora Borealis coating because of this beautiful multicolor reflective coating there. And then we're going to put it inside there, but actually I think I want it further, further down a little bit. So we're going to, I'm going to add a couple wraps. You can put it there if, if you like. Let's see, one more wrap should do it. Cool, okay, I think I like that better. Okie dokie. So, and then we're just gonna do a finishing wrap now. It's kind of similar to the beginning wrap, except I'm gonna stack my wraps really close together here. Like a so. And then I do about four or five wraps, just like the beginning. And then we're going to snip with a little bit of extra length there. And then we will tuck that in with the pliers. So just press down and kind of rotate gently so that it's laying flush against the frame. Ooh, look at that. That looks pretty already. Okay, so make sure you have this somewhere safe so it doesn't get snagged and then fly off the table because we are going to measure the next portion. So take your measuring device, or if you have a ruler, that's fine too. <laughs> so the next segment will be about 24 inches. So this is 11 inches here, this piece of paper, the long side. So we're just going to go all the way across and then take that back to that starting side. One more across, that'll be 22 inches. And then we need three more inches, which will probably be somewhere like that, where the fold is at. Cool, put our measuring device away, and then I'm gonna wedge my spool under something so it doesn't misbehave. Okay, so this next portion, we're gonna do another beginning wrap, and we're gonna start right here. So same thing, I kind of fold over a small segment of wire, I'll take the longer side and ouch, I just whipped myself in the face. <laughs> I 
I forgot to warn you. Of <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot to warn you of pulling this too um, earnestly because it'll whip back into your face really hard. Uh, I've done that so many times over the years. Um, so you're gonna take this little end here and just fold it over and continue and fold it over again until until it's flush with the and press that end down. So, no pokey. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I wonder if that's um <laughs> that gets old yet. All right. So small bead, same thing. We want to we want to uh, wrap and line up the edge there. It's okay if it's not perfect. So we do one wrap and then we move on to the next. So go ahead and consult your printout if you want to match up the layout like exactly. I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow and see where it takes me. Also these frames are completely handmade by me so you know, you might see some variation in yours for, for like these bends or the shape, but that's just the nature of, you know, handmade stuff. Uh, I've been making sun catchers for many years and they kind of always come out just a tiny bit different, but you know, close enough. Uh, let's go. So let's like, if you string your bead on there and you decide, you know what, I think I want to wrap again, you can actually just keep the bead on there and you know, move, wrap the wire a couple more times without having to take the bead off. And then I will put the bead there. Okay. All right, moving along. So let's see, I think I'm gonna actually wrap it one more time. So if you see that, the bead's just kind of resting. So if you wanted to add wraps without taking the bead off, you could make life a little bit easier. I think I'm gonna put that there. And then I'm gonna wrap, maybe one more wrap. And the next one. Actually, I think I'm gonna do one more wrap. And I'm still lining up the flat edge of the bead against the frame there. And then I'm kind of just pulling straight down, pulling the wire straight down. I'm not pulling super hard though, because you can crack your crystal and that's always sad. I mean, usually it doesn't break entirely, it just chips, but One kind of fits nicely right there, so I'll just leave that as it is and wrap. So you can wrap since this is still open. Real easy. You can just kind of, you know, actually I'm gonna put, you can just kind of uh, put the wire through, wrap it around like that. Easy peasy. So, hmm, actually I'm gonna do one more. Okay, that looks good. Just hold your bead in place. And then I'm gonna do another wrap. Seems like the pattern is two or three wraps before every bead so far. And if that needs to change at any moment, that's totally fine. Because you can actually scoot your beads down as needed. So we have two more little beads on this section. I'm gonna line up that edge there and wrap around. And let's do one more wrap. Okay, 
And then now, after we wrap this on, we are going to do a figure eight weave, as they call it. So we're gonna wrap until we reach the spot where they meet up. And then we are going to bind those two parts together. So I would say that looks good. We can probably start. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that through that segment. Just make sure your wire doesn't form any loops or kinks when you pull it through. And then I like to sandwich these two parts of the frame between my fingers so that they are held straight so you don't end up wrapping one where it's like, you know, not lined up properly. So I'm gonna pull. So the, the, the tighter you pull, the more it kind of pulls the bottom part or top part over. So I'm going to make sure that I hold these two in place. And then as I pull, I'm going to go here and then I'm gonna go around here. So we're kind of making a figure eight around back and forth over and over again. So then I go back into this part here. Pull that. Make sure you keep these pretty tight in your fingers. And then we're gonna go on this side and then this side again. So we're gonna do this a few times until it feels pretty nice and sturdy. And this figure eight weave is what I use to connect most of my, any connection points on my sun catchers. It's really functional and easy to do. Oh wait, nope, that's not a figure eight anymore. I, yep, it needs to go around here. Okay, there. <laughs> So if you noticed, I accidentally went around and then I went in here. So what was happening is I was wrapping across both of them like that. But you're supposed to wrap around each one individually. So then we have to go in there. So make sure when you're pulling that this doesn't happen. You see how the wire is forming a loop? And then if you just kept pulling and didn't undo it, now it's getting worse. So make sure if you get a loop, just kind of pull it loose, you know, twist it around, undo it, whatever you need to do to make sure it doesn't fold in on itself. Okay. I think one more should do it. So we're just weaving back and forth between these two, uh, I think that seems good, pretty sturdy. So this part you can, anytime we have a weave like this, you can pull pretty tight because there are no crystals in danger, so. And then we're gonna do a finishing wrap here, about four or five coils. Oop. And then we're going to uh, you see that? Just gonna snip there. And you wanna leave a little bit of length so that we can press this down. All right, very nice. Next, we're going to take our wire spool again. This is actually a very well-behaved wire spool. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> so we're gonna take another bit and this next segment is going to be 32 inches, approximately, it doesn't have to be exact. So we're gonna take our instructions, or if you went and ran and got a ruler, that's great. And if you don't feel like it, no problem. <laughs> we're just gonna hold it to one corner, go down all the way to the other corner, and that'll be 11 inches. And then do the same thing, that'll be 22 inches. And then one more time. And then stop maybe like an inch short. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be so exact, so. 32 inches roughly. Okay, so this part's a little longer. 
So we're going to start somewhere here and we want to, if you look at your printout, there is a teardrop that is going to go right here. So that means we need to give space for that teardrop and we also need to do a beginning coil. So, and if you need to, you can scoot stuff around so it'll be okay if it's not perfect. So I'm gonna put it maybe like right there. So I'm gonna do that fold, the beginning fold, and I hold down that shorter piece and start doing one or two, usually two wraps of the longer piece, the longer side of the wire rather. And then we are going to use our pliers and wrap this around. And we're gonna go into this small space here. So maybe, maybe I'll bend, curl the end of the wire here so that it's easier to push through, push through that space there. So I think four coils will be enough. We don't want it too cramped with stuff, so I'm just gonna do four coils instead of maybe the five. And we're gonna tuck that. Okay, and this can still scoot a little bit, so if you feel like we need to move it over, actually we might, because the teardrop is here, so let's scoot it a teeny bit over. So I'm gonna line it up with this part right here line which you know there may be some variation in your butterfly so we're gonna take the next crystal which is a dark emerald green and then we're going to line up that bead and pull down and push through the frame and we're gonna do the same thing so I kind of pull like this and then I also push through the frame like that Easy peasy. So if any of you follow my work or have seen my stuff before, you probably know that I'm just obsessed with color gradients. <laughs> Hashtag ombre all day. But yeah, so um, I thought it would be super cool to do a rainbow colored butterfly, also ombre. Um, Micah actually helped me. He gave me some suggestions on the layout. He's pretty useful sometimes. <laughs> so, and he's also been recommending that I do rainbow for most of my other stuff. Like if you've seen our moon kit, uh, he was like, you should do a rainbow moon. <laughs> but I had already, I did way too many colors on that one. There were like five color options. Too crazy. Okay. So on this part, we're gonna wrap these two overlapping parts together. Provide some structural integrity. Okay, so I think one wrap and then that's about all the room we have before we need to put on this nice plump clear crystal. Cool. So we could probably do another wrap all the way around the two overlapping parts of the frame. Let's get out. We could probably do one more. We'll do one more. And then we will go into this part here. And then wrap a couple of times. Maybe one more time. And then we're going to take this next crystal. Sorry, if you hear weird noises, it's because my wire is just going crazy and hitting the little light booth I'm inside, so. <laughs> oh, Doki. I think this top wing section is probably my favorite range of colors. I don't know when this happened, but I just suddenly became obsessed with just blues and cool toned colors as I, be, as I got older. Back in the day, my favorite color used to be green. Micah's favorite color is like yellow and orange. Does anyone else out there love yellow and orange? What are your favorite colors?
pretty much, I think when you combine all the colors together, they're all my favorite. So this part I kind of wedged in there into that little corner. And if you need to scoot things around so that they're closer together, no prob. Okay, so moving down. Ooh, we're almost halfway done. Isn't that amazing? We're really flying through this, aren't we? <laughs> uh, let's do two wraps. Two wraps between each bead. Or, I mean, you, you know, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Don't let me tell you what to do. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, one more. Alright, so lining up the beads. Oh, also, if at any point I'm moving a little bit faster than you are and you need to pause or something, you know, do that, pause, take your time, catch up, and resume whenever you're ready. I guess I'm so used to wire wrapping like this that it's, you know, I just kind of breeze through it. It's like almost autopilot now. <laughs> so, sorry if I'm moving a bit quickly. So I'm still lining up the, uh, the camera doesn't want to focus, lining up the edge of the crystal there. You can see that. And I just pull the wire down and wrap. So it's in place and get through there. I'm gonna do two wraps. That looks good. Sandwich that. Wrap, wrap, wrap. All right, look at that. Almost the end of our first strand. close to that section with the teardrop. Okay, so we're gonna do another kind of figure eight. Well, it is essentially, in principle, a figure eight. So we're going to wrap until we get a little closer to that corner. Wrap, and I think that looks good because when we thread the teardrop, the drill hole is right here close to the tip. So you're gonna make sure the wire is low enough, close enough to that corner. Actually, I'm gonna do one more wrap. Cool. I will show you what I mean. So if you see, if we didn't wrap further down, then this teardrop would be too far away because then it would be like up here because the drill hole. So you wanna make sure that your wire is closer to the corner because that's where the drill hole is for the teardrop, so. Okay. So this you have to be a little bit delicate because these teardrops can chip easily. So what we're gonna do is just kind of hold it in place there. And also when you pull, you might be pulling the frame over like this, see that? So just sandwich that there and if you can, sandwich that whole area, all kinds of sandwiches. Um, so sandwich that whole area, including the bead. And I'm gonna be a little bit more gentle. I have been pulling kind of snug for these ones. So I'm gonna be a little bit softer. So you wrap around that part. And then we're gonna do a figure eight now. So we go around the bead, the teardrop. There we go. And then we're going to wrap around the side of the frame. And it's okay if it overlaps your previous wraps there. And we're gonna go around and behind the teardrop. So if you see back side, and then we go behind the teardrop to the front here, and then 
and then make sure because I just pulled on it and then it, it still wants to pull the frame over so just make sure you hold the frame and now that the teardrop is kind of in place because of these the wire on the front and the back here you don't have to worry too much about holding the teardrop but I will still I would still hold this little segment and then you're just gonna wrap and do the same thing so we're just doing a weave we're going back and forth And then just see how sturdy it is. That feels pretty good. And if it's a little floppy, that's totally fine too because your butterfly is not really gonna go through. And then also if it accidentally got, if your frame got pulled forward, you could maybe press it back if needed. We'll see when we go to connect these how they meet up, so. Okay, I think that seems good. So I actually didn't need that much space here. So I'm gonna see if I can scooch these down a little bit. You don't have to do this if you don't want. I'm just gonna do a little bit of scooching. So when I scoot, I use my nail and I just kind of individually, each wire wrap, I just kind of pick it, pick it downwards. Cool, okay. That looks better, I think. So we're gonna do another ending wrap here. So you're going to stack, if you can, your wires close together, your wraps close together. And then I'm gonna do like four wraps and then snip. And then tuck, eh, this is kind of a weird angle. <laughs> Let me see, here we go. So just be careful that you don't really press, try not to touch that teardrop because you might chip it when you Go in with your pliers. Let me see if I can scoop that. There we go. Perfect! Okay, one side is done. Moving on to the next side. So we're gonna do the same thing. So let's set this butterfly half down. And we are going to measure another 14 inches. You're gonna take your wire spool. Oh man, I didn't put it on my under my book. Now it's all okay. Well, <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Okay. So we're gonna start on one corner. You're gonna pull it to the other corner, and that is 11 inches. And then we're gonna put it back on this corner, and 14 inches is probably somewhere a little bit past that fold. So we will snip that there. And my wire spool's all messed up now. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> and take your other bead strand. So don't forget, we're gonna start on the opposite side of the teardrop, so this six millimeter bead. Yours might be round, it might not be, depending on your color scheme, but whatever is the opposite of the teardrop. I'm just gonna make sure there are no major kinks there so that I can slide off my first bead. Okay, actually, I forgot I should start this coil first. So when you're in tight spaces like this, I will actually start the fold ahead of time, kind of like we did the first time. That way it's a little easier to, it's kind of already, I try and angle it so it goes underneath that part there so that I can Fold it over just to get a nice easy head start. So I hold that there as an anchor and then I wrap the longer end a couple of times. And then once you wrap a couple times, this is in place. So you can pull it pretty taut and it won't keep sliding, uh, keep pulling extra length through. So, beep. And then we're going to tuck Tuck that. Sometimes you might need to get weird angles in with your pliers. Cool. That's nice and flat, and then I'm gonna scoot it down a little bit. All right. So our first bead is this non-teardrop bead. <laughs> Whatever that may be for yours. So on this side, it goes over, so I'm gonna go under on the other side. And then I'm just 
just gonna start wrapping around. So for these empty segments that have no beads, I'm just going to space it pretty far apart. And the reason why I like to wrap by pushing the wire through like this part, I like to push it through instead of like, you know, if you're sewing, you would take the point and then you would press, push it through like that. The reason why I don't like to do that is because of this. It will, the wire tension, it causes it to like stay straight and do weird things. Like it doesn't pull like thread. So if you maintain the wire tension by curving it around as close as you can to that wrap point, then it stays taut. Whereas if you do the other way, like you're sewing and you treat this end as like the needle, it does weird things and it gets all, you know, it presses out outwards in different spots. All right, actually, if you want, you can compare with your other one and see where you put your bead. Oh, that looks about right. Cool. So we're gonna take our first crystal here. Make sure you match up that flat edge as best you can. And then we're gonna wrap one time. Take the next. Does anyone have a favorite butterfly? I know that monarchs are pretty popular. Um, I have some uh, butterfly wing earrings are actually pretty popular. I've had some for a number of years that I bought from Etsy way back in the day before I started, before it even like ever occurred to me to sell anything at any point in time. <laughs> this is like the early days of Etsy, but I found some butterfly wing earrings and they were blue morpho. It was so pretty. Um, there were some other ones too, I forgot what they were, but the Blue Morpho one for sure sticks out in my mind just because it's so, it's so brilliant, brilliantly colored and it's iridescent and, oh, I just, I think I just heard a chip. Do you see that tiny piece of glass there on my finger? So that's why <laughs> you want to be careful because you can cut yourself. And we don't like ouchies when we're doing fun projects. Okay. So we're gonna wrap this one time. Let's see. I'm gonna do it like that and then probably put that big bead on. So wire wrapping can be kind of nice and meditative because it's, you're doing repetitive things over and over. So it can be really relaxing put on some fun music. Although sometimes when you're doing stuff and not paying attention, uh, that, that's also bad. <laughs> if you're, you need to wire wrap two things together or stuff like that. Um, I've messed up many a time because I was like listening to a podcast or something and then just totally forgot that I was supposed to join two parts together or things like that. Yee, almost there. Okay, next section, let's move this to the side. Grab your measuring tool, device, makeshift thing. <laughs> so the next segment is gonna be 24 inches. So we're gonna go from one corner to the other and that'll be 11. And we're gonna do this again, that'll be 22. And then we're gonna do a couple of inches there, maybe like that much. And uh, if you can, if you saw, we've had like a little bit of leftover for all of these sections so far, which is okay, um, because I don't know how many wraps everybody's gonna do, how close together. So some people might use more wire than others. And it's always, you just, you never wanna run out of wire. I mean, if you do, it's not the end of the world. Um, wire is pretty forgiving, except for when it stabs you, then it's not nice. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna take this longer end. Ouch, I just pinched myself. <laughs> and snip off that extra because I have enough coils. Press that down. Ok. 
cool. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that next crystal there. So I kind of like to just eyeball stuff, but if you guys want to hold your butterfly frame against the printout that has the photo and, you know, line up the crystals a little bit more precisely, you could totally do that. No prob. side I went a few more wraps okay and then we're just gonna match up that flat edge there okay next bead Oops, what's happening here? Oh, that's a spare piece of wire. Okay, so matching up the flat edge there, if you can. Pull that through. Actually, I think that was a little bit far. Eh, that's okay. <laughs> oh well. This one here. And the next. Oop, we're gonna put, sorry, that was my <laughs> light, light box again. We're gonna put that bead in the corner there. Cool. And then I think last time we did two wraps in between each bead, and so I will do that again. Just lining up the flat edge of that crystal, and then we're going to wrap a couple of times. beads for this section. Oop. There we go. Oh. I think I heard another little chip. So do be careful. That just kind of happens. It's inevitable. happens with gemstone a lot, chipping. Uh, the life of a beater. Chipping beads and gemstones. It's extra sad with gemstone just because a lot of times when you buy a batch of gemstone it might be a, a quality of stone or something that you can't find again so extra sad. But Swarovski has been making a lot of these colors for a long time and boy are they good at it. Uh, sometimes when I buy which is another crystal producer, not quite as prestigious or expensive as Swarovski, the lot, the color lots might look different. So they'll call it the same, but then when you get it, you're like, wait a second, this looks slightly different than the other batch I had. So sometimes if Especially for my designs that are really, uh, there's so many f nuances with slight shades of color and things like that. It makes it hard to be consistent, but I mean, I guess probably it's not that noticeable. I'm just so particular. <laughs> 
But yeah, Swarovskis are pretty much, oh, I did it again. <laughs> it's so funny. At the same spot too. See how I wrapped around both instead of doing figure eight, which is going, weaving between each one in, in separately. So instead of going around that way, I'm gonna go around here. And I go back in here. Do it uh, one more time. Actually, I think that's good. Let's see, how many times did I do it here? Five times. Five times. Okay, cool. That looks good. I mean, it doesn't have to be so identical. <laughs> so we're going to end this here with an ending wrap, which is about four wraps closely stacked together. Oh my, sorry. Is my pliers dropping? <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna tuck that end by pressing and rotating so that it's nice and smooth and we don't get any ouchies. Okay, next section. So be careful because if you didn't put your spool under something to keep it tame, this might have happened to you. <laughs> so I'm gonna just untangle this. Because if you just start pulling on it, then like weird stuff's gonna happen. It's gonna turn into a knot, and a, a knot in wire is very different from a knot in string. <laughs> so it's not. It is not good. <laughs> Where? What? Which one? Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. Next section. Thirty-two inches. So that'll be. One length of paper, 11. Two lengths of paper, 22. Ah. Ah. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm back. So, third length. That'll be 33, I guess. Well, too much by an inch, so I'll just cut it an inch short. Okie dokie. So we are beginning. So same thing here. The teardrop is going to live right here in this corner. So let's start our beginning coil right there. So I'm just gonna hold that length over. I'm gonna actually flip my frame upside down. It makes it easier. So I'm gonna hold that over, fold, and then keep holding and take the long end and wrap a couple of times until it's nice and secure and then we will I'm just gonna hook that end there so that when I try and bend it through it's kind of I don't know if you can see that it's kind of easier to have it come around and then I shall snip with a little bit of extra length sticking out. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just gonna tuck that end. Cool. That feels good. And then as we did on the other side, you can scoot this around if needed. Okie dokie. Matching up the flat edge to the frame. We're gonna wrap once and put the next crystal. And if I remember correctly, I think on the other side it was kind of far over. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oop, that might be too close. Okay, let's try that. So we're gonna match that up and wrap. And add our next crystal. whipped myself. Okay, I think I heard another chip. I just want to make sure I don't cut myself on camera. That would not be good. <laughs> um, scare people away. 
Okay. So now that we get to this part, we could go in to this little circle area and start wrapping over both parts of the frame there. And we'll grab this big bead. Okay, and then we're gonna wrap maybe one or two more times around this part. And maybe one more time. Cool. And then we're gonna go around just that single part of frame. Make sure you match up as best you can. The flat edge. We're almost there. Okay. So I'm curious to know what, uh, which one was your guys' favorite color? Which color scheme did you get? Would you like to see any specific color schemes? We're thinking of uh, maybe offering some seasonal colors or just changing, keeping these fresh, offering new colors for, for our craft kits. Oh, I'm missing something here. <laughs> hey, I didn't go down far enough. That's weird. Oh, I see. I grabbed the wrong bead. There we go. Okay, so here I'm gonna wrap a couple times so that the wire can get closer to the corner so that we can Put this there. And we're going to do two wraps in between each crystal here. So I don't know if you guys know this, but we have to string every one of these by hand. So there are, I forget how many colors are in this. A lot. <laughs> so, you know, I think, uh, yeah, it does take some some patience, but it's really fun to play with all the different colors. I never get tired of that. This blue here is not a blue that I use often. It's called sapphire, and it's like a pretty rich blue. I tend to like more desaturated blues, like a non-primary. I don't usually... I'm not a huge fan of like primary colors, like primary red, primary blue, primary yellow. I prefer different tones, things that are mellow, or if they are bright, just like a more of a cyan, magenta, uh, you know, color palette. Oh, I think I only did a single wrap there in between these crystals. Oh well. <laughs> I'll just scoot these down a little bit. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Just to make sure they are spread out enough. All right, two wraps, gotta remember. Yeah, sometimes it just, uh, you check out when you're doing this because you're like, ah, oh, you're just kind of going along. One, two. One, two. Okay, cool. So we're getting, getting close to the teardrop. 
which means we may need to make some minor adjustments. Make sure everything, oh, oh, oh dear. I just chipped that one too. Just wanna make sure it's not on my fingers. So same thing, you're gonna go down, 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 down. Uh, I just like imagine the teardrop right there. I think I need to go down one more. And then, ooh, last one. Na -na. We're gonna put that on. Okay, I friggin' love this color. It's so pretty. I just can't handle how pretty it is. Okay, so if you notice, as I'm pulling, it wants to pull the frame over, so make sure you do the sandwich thing. All the sandwiches. So hold that in place, but also you see how the teardrop is like Mwah. So try and, if you can, sandwich that whole area between your fingers and pull that around. Go around the frame and come back over and go behind the teardrop. I'm gonna scoot that down, there we go, so that it's resting on the frame better. Cool, oh, oh God, pull too hard. Yeah, don't pull too hard. <laughs> yeah, you see the, fr the frame went over, so. Push that back out and we're gonna do another round of weaves here. Okay, going back around and back behind. Cool. And that seems, I usually touch it a little bit, see if. Okay, so I guess our battery died for the camera, so I kind of finished this off. Uh, without realizing so I actually unwound this section here so with that we can do it together but essentially you're just doing a finishing wrap right here since we've finished wrapping our teardrop in place you're just gonna do a finishing wrap just like we have been doing and just like we did on the other side so I usually will wrap around four or five times and then I'm pretty comfortable with how secure it is at that point I can just get in there. I've already trimmed this, unfortunately, so it's a lot harder to work with. But if you still have your length of wire, it's probably a lot more manageable. Okay, so, and then when you trim it, mine's already trimmed, as you can see. So when you trim it, just make sure you tuck the edge there so that you don't, it doesn't catch on your fingers later when we have to continue working with this. Okay, so that's good. All right, yay! Isn't that pretty? Good job, guys. We're almost there. So now we are going to wrap the butterfly together in the center here. So let's take our measuring device or ruler, if you got one. And then we're going to measure around 12 inches. So the full sheet of paper is 11 inches. It's so a corner to corner. Here's another inch or so. Doesn't have to be super precise. And then put your extra wire somewhere. Okay. So we are going to begin on this left side antenna here. So we're going to do a beginning wrap. So we're gonna do that fold over the shorter length there and do a couple of wraps so that it stays in place. And then you can start tugging this shorter end around and tuck it. Just kind of rotate wires and press. 
press down that end. Just like that. Make sure it feels smooth. Although it's not as important since nobody's, I mean, I don't think anyone's gonna wear this as jewelry, but <laughs> it's usually more important to do the tucking when you're making jewelry because it has to go on people's skin, so. Okay, so you're going to hold the two frames together. You're going to hold the two frames together. The, the all three points are pretty close. This spot, this spot, and then down here. So you want them to be close enough for us to wrap. They don't have to be like so exact. So we're just gonna lock it in place by holding the antenna right here. Once you have it like lined up, so make sure it's not, you know, like that. You wanna line them up. And then we're gonna do another figure eight weave. So we're gonna go around one side and try and make sure that when you're pulling that it doesn't, you don't pull so much that it starts to go under the other piece. So we're just gonna come around. And if you can see, they're not really lined up anymore. So just make sure you are constantly checking back and readjusting. up the middle and then back over the other side and then down the middle back over the left side and then just kind of check back I'm sure everything looks lined up that looks good and we're going to continue doing that a couple more times until we get down to you get really close to that crevice, you might need to scooch that wire manually since it gets a little cramped in that spot, in that little crack. Okay. Cool. So once you get down to the very end there, you're going to wrap around this way. these two points here. So we'll just go once or twice. And that might be kind of a tight fit. I think once is probably all it's going to fit, so. And then, let's see. If it feels like these don't want to come together, it could be that we've Oil this too high up. So if you see, if I press these antenna together, then it spreads out more here. So if they don't want to go together, we might need to scooch these down a little bit. The coils we made. The lower they are, the more the antenna can separate. You know, the body can kind of be at a slant there. Okay. So I'm not going to figure eight this part because these coils, when they're really tight, they get so tight that they can just cut the wire. So we're just gonna do a regular wrap and we're gonna wrap a few times and maybe go, you know, back over if needed. Back up over the area where we did. And then we will finish up by connecting. finish it off on this side, right next to our teardrop. So I would usually 
I will do like maybe four wraps and I will be content with how secure that is. And we're just going to tuck that little end right there in, which might be a little tricky. That's good. Okie dokie. And for the very last uh, connection section, we are going to need another 12 inches. So let's get our measuring tool. We're going to take the rest of your wire and go from corner corner. I'm going to take this end, come back to the beginning and do another inch or so. That'll be 12 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. You should have some extra. I tried to pack some extra wire for you guys just in case. Just in case anything happens. Okay. So now we're going to connect here where these touch. So I'm, let's start on side. So I, I like to start off with a fold like this when it's uh, trying to get it to focus. A little fold like this when it's a little cramped. When you have two pieces of frame close together. So, so I'm just going to anchor that shorter length there with my fingers and wrap a couple of times by pushing the wire through the frame and pulling back around. Now that it's mostly in place, let's grab that end and we'll stick it through that crevice. It's really short, so as, as usual, I always recommend using the pliers with short length because you don't want to poke yourself. And then we're just going to tuck that end there. Cool. I'm going to push this up a little bit so that it's... it's kind of touching right there so let's do let's go ahead and start our figure eight weave so for this same thing you want to lock it into place so that when you're pulling really tight you don't accidentally pull so tight that it starts overlapping I mean you could it doesn't really matter it's not gonna it's not the end of the world so I kind of hold the frames in place and that way I can pull taut and it kind of stays flat the way I want Do maybe like five or six weaves. Cool. And then we will end. Let's end on the opposite side just so that it there's not so much wire on this wing. So we will end it right here. So let's do another maybe four coils. Fourth one, I'll just cut it with maybe like that much space, and that much wire, and then we'll just tuck that Cool. Yay, look at that. So cute. Okay, so now let's do some wing details. You can do this however you like. So this is a thicker piece of wire. It's just a, a length that's coiled up in your package. Uh, it's enough for a main line here and a main line here. Or if you want the main line to be you know, somewhere else. But I'm gonna start mine right here in between the teardrop and that turquoise one. So since it's kind of cramped in that spot, I'm gonna do that thing where I kind of start off with, start off with a bend right here. No, <laughs> there we go, focus. So we're going to hook that and then anchor with your finger and I'm going to, for this one I'm just going to wrap once because I don't want it to get too cramped. So as I'm bracing, wrap once. Okay. Now I'm going to finish off the shorter end here and let's just curve that in, bend that in there. Frame around, will it 
fit. So if you just rub your finger along, it'll make a little curve, and then I'm gonna brace this, oops, I'm gonna brace this part here, and maybe just rub my finger so that there's a curve right there. I'm gonna go in between those two, the middle two of these four. And you can also do whatever else you like. You can add more kinks if you want, or if you want it more wavy, but I think I'm satisfied with this. So I'm gonna wrap towards the bottom. I'm gonna wrap this way. So I'm gonna keep this in place if I can. For this, I wouldn't pull too tight because the tighter you pull, the more it's gonna straighten our little wave right here. Because we have this nice, this nice wave. Which you can accentuate if needed by pressing down. Okay. And it doesn't have a lot of space, so I'm just gonna wrap twice and finish it instead of doing a finishing wrap of four or five. So let's snip it like right there. Just be careful you don't poke yourself with that. And then we're going to, gonna oops, tuck that in. I accidentally pressed on the crystal. Oopsie. Cool, and then you can squeeze those back in if needed. Cute. Okay, so let's do the other side. So same thing, I'm going to start with, I'm gonna start with a little fold like that. And then you can put this in whatever direction is more comfortable for you. I seem to like to have the fold behind the frame like this. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna position, I'm gonna start off like that. And then, I'm hold it, hold that little length in place, and wrap once, and then we'll start tucking that around. so that it forms a nice curve. And then we're gonna brace that with our fingers and make a nice curve here. This is a really soft wire, so you don't have to do anything too forceful. Cool. Actually, I'm gonna scoot this down a little bit. I don't like this kink right here. If you have a little weird kink in your wire, you can crimp it with your pliers and straighten it out like that shape with your fingers okay and then on the other side we wrapped downwards so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna rotate the frame around so that's easier for me to wrap and we're just going to wrap twice and then snip it with maybe that much that much length just enough to tuck around the backside. Cute, looking cool. Okay, and then we're gonna take a little bit more of these lengths here. Actually, yeah, I think we can use 
pretty short amount. Uh, let's say another 12 inches, or maybe just 11 inches is fine. So we'll just do one sh full sheet of paper like this. And of course you guys can play around and do it differently if you like. This is just how I'm going to show you that you can do your lines in different spots if you want. The lines on the flat are wings. Okay, so I did that fold thing again and I'm hooking the fold like this. I want this shorter end to be wrapping on this, on this side here. So I'm going to position it like that. So I'm going to brace that and then wrap a couple of times just to secure it onto the frame. And then once it seems secure, we can Tucking that around. I'm actually going to just leave that here because I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bit less flattened here. So when you're working on round wire, if you pull on this, it'll just keep turning and just the whole thing will pull off. <laughs> it'll unwind. So that's why I hammer everything so that it stays. So it's, it braces a lot better. So I'm actually going to leave that length and kind of hold that length while we're working until we get this going. So I'm going to wrap so that the wire is on the outside of the circle. And then we're just going to have a bend like this. This is the thinner wire, so it'll be really malleable. That looks cool. So like I just kind of pushed my thumb like that. It's super easy because the wire is so thin. So I'm going to brace at this point that I want it to connect here and it might move around a little bit just because like I said this is not flattened so when we are coiling around it it will keep kind of moving and turning a little bit but that's okay we can adjust as needed okay so so we have that line okay so cool so we have one line there so we can start spreading the wraps apart a little bit now. And I'm gonna go up a little bit more. Maybe like right there. So I think I did three wraps. And then I'm going to kind of make another bend like that. Does that look cool? Do I like that? Maybe up here. You could do different things. Oh, do I want to connect it there? Kind of like that. What do you guys think? You can do your own thing. Eh, I'm going to put it here because it, it cuts up the space really nicely. So, so I'm going to wrap towards the circle because there's a little bit more space here than I feel like next to the crystal. So we're just going to overlap on the wire that's already on the frame. That's okay. So if we wrap a few times, maybe three or four times, that should be good. So I'm going to snip a little bit of a nub sticking out so that I can tuck that in nicely there. All right, and let's do that again on the other side. So we're gonna do one paper's length, 11 inches. I'm just gonna go from one end to the end, other end of the paper. Snip that. Oh, actually, I forgot. We gotta get rid of that little guy. So let's just see if we can tuck him in. Tuck him into bed to rest. And, okay. Cool. Okay. Oh wait. Still kind of sticking out. Don't want to stab yourself. All right. So we're going to start on this end of the circle again, just like we did on this side. Uh, I'm going to make a fold. There you can see that. A little fold there. And then I'm going to have it so that the shorter end is on, on this side here, not on this top, top side. So I'm going to fold that around, brace that there, and then 
push that through the hole. So now that we have a couple of wraps, let's bend that over here. And then we're gonna leave that little guy to kind of be an anchor, just like it was for us on this side. So let's wrap one more time for extra security. And you want your wire coming out on the outside of the circle. And then what did we do? I think we went like this. Yeah, so we made this curve pointing towards the wing, towards the tip, rather, tip of the wing. Okay, so when we get it to a spot we like, let's brace it right there and then wrap. And then when you pull it through, since your finger's in the way, you might have to like move your finger around so that you can pull on it. Pull it taut. Cool, so now we have wrap and we can start spacing these out again just like the other time. I'm going to hold this upside down because it's a little easier for me in this position. So we did three spread out wraps on the other side. Let's see if that looks pretty similar. It doesn't have to be so exact. Actually I'm going to do, it looks like it's further away this on this side. So I'm going to do one more wrap. Cool. And I think we went, that's, it goes down and then up. So down and then. Push it down a little bit. And then up. Cool. I think that looks all right. And we're going to wrap that here four times or so. All right, and we will end on this side here. All right, that looks awesome. And then if you need to uh, readjust your little wing bends, you can. Ooh, cool. Hey there, future tip here. Uh, as I was admiring my finished piece, I forgot to tuck this little guy, just like I almost did on the other side. So let's do that here. I'm going to show you how to do that here. I mean, you probably already know, but just for the rest of the video, it's going to be untucked because I didn't notice. And I'm traveling back in time to do this now, so let's do it. Okay, so we are getting this guy tucked into bed. timeline so where's the rest of the wire also if you have spare lengths here just from cutting off of working with the other parts you can use that for this too okay so we only have this much we don't probably you probably don't have that much wire left so we don't need to measure anything anymore we, we could just work off the okay so <laughs> um, I think I want two lines going here, but you can also have them go maybe like higher up or you could have them have like a wave like our other one did. So I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it over here just like that. So I'm going to wrap around once and then use the pliers and Get that all the way wrapped. Like that. All right. And then I'm just gonna have that go straight across here. And you can play with it if you want. If you wanna add some, some waves or something, you could just push up with your thumb and down with your index finger at the same time. It'll make a wave like that. So you could do that if you want. Do I want to do that? I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with a 
straight curve. So I'm going to straighten this a little bit with my nail. If you need to straighten this thin wire, if you just press your nail against your finger pad and pull, it will straighten. So I'm just going to go like a so. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to actually wrap. I'm going to, oops. I'm going to wrap upwards this way so that we can add the other line with the same piece of wire. So since there's a bead in the way and I need to kind of wrap right where the bead's at, I'm just going to go over and wrap in between. And then just see where I want my other line to be. I think I want it higher up. So I'm going to wrap a couple more times. So same thing here. Technically this bead is in the way where I would wrap the wire. So I'm just going to go over here. Okay. I think this is where I want my wing line to be. So I'm going to just wrap once and then take a look. You could also have it more spread out if you want, or if you want it like more parallel. What if we did that? Does that look weird? No, it looks weird. Uh, yes, I think. That looks kind of cool. Okay. And we're just going to wrap twice here just because it gets a little bit cramped. So try and snip that pretty close to the frame since there's not a lot of room to tuck. All right. Cool. So we take this leftover wire and do the same thing on this side. So where did I start it? I think I started it right here somewhere in between. So I do the same thing. I just fold and just hold that while you wrap once or twice and then use the pliers to finish that wrapping that length. Cool. And then we can go across. I think we went between these two. Yeah. So between these two is where we wrap that first one. So we're going to wrap that right here. And I'm just going to make a slight curve like that. Okay. And then I'm going to brace it with my fingers and wrap upwards. And then again, if the bead is in the way and you need to wrap right there, just move it up and wrap after the bead. So I think, oh, it looks like these aren't really lined up. So push that bead down a little bit. So, and then we're going to go past this little orange bead and we're going to wrap it on top, just like we did on the other side. I'm going to turn this upside down because it's a little easier for me. Fix that curve there. And then I think we did in between these top two beads. All right. Let's wrap maybe two or three times. And then we're just going to snip it as close to the frame as we can. And then tuck that little end. All right. Ooh, cool. <laughs> okay. So now, this is where you guys can kind of decide how you want your butterfly to hang. I kind of like the idea of hanging it like not straight like this, maybe hanging it from your wall diagonally, or if you want it to hang totally straight, you don't need this brass ring at all. You can keep it for some other project if you want, but if you want it to hang straight, then you would just attach the jump rings with the chain somewhere right here. So it's up to you. I can show you how to do both. So let's move these out of frame. So this is a jump ring. A jump ring has a little cut in it. 
There are also closed, this is an open jump ring. There are closed jump rings as well that are soldered shut that are good for really secure things. So how you open a jump ring is, you place one plier on this half. You wanna kind of place it, you don't wanna, you don't wanna place it right here. You wanna put it right, you know, as far onto the other half as possible. And then with this side, you kind of brace the other half. And sometimes with, it's easier to brace it like lengthwise like that. And then you're just gonna rotate it open like this. So that way, if you see, it still keeps its shape. You're not deforming the circle. You're just kind of opening it up. You don't want to open a jump ring by pulling it apart because then you won't be able to get the shape back together. So definitely want to rotate open like this. Put one end of the chain like so. And then you pick a spot that you might want the chain to be. I think I kind of liked it right there. So with the chain, try and keep the chain on there. And then you hook in between two beads. And this might get a little tricky because it's kind of cramped in here. So let's see if I can get it to focus. Can you see the jump ring right there? And I'm gonna try and grab that with these pliers. And then get it to... Eep. <laughs> I just want to make sure you guys can see. So it's, it's a little cramped, but just try and close it up just like that. And then you have one skewer. same two beads that you did on the other side. So you might need to squish it in there. Is that the same spot? Let me see. It is not the same spot. <laughs> oh. Right here. And it doesn't matter the order that you, so if you want to put on the frame first, like right now, what I'm doing, and then take the chain. Chain in on that first chain link. So just keep a hold on that. Use your hands if necessary so that you can grab your other pliers. And maybe it might help if you're resting the butterfly. I guess because I'm trying to show you guys, I'm holding it up to the camera. But if you just rest it, table and then rotate it back closed. Cool. So should look like that. Yay! So now you can hang your butterfly like this. And for those of you who would like your butterfly to hang slightly diagonal, you can hang the chain somewhere here, just on one side. And you can trim this to length if you want. So if you don't want the chain this long, you can just cut it to where you think you might like, maybe like right there or something, and then attach a jump ring to the end of the chain. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that really quick. So you just put the chain on one end, or put the jump ring on one end of the chain rather. Okay, 
Okay. Ta-da! So now that's attached. So as I said, you can trim this if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it just to keep this short. So then we're going to put this on, or you don't have to put this on first, it doesn't matter what order, but. And I would recommend hanging the chain somewhere rather close to the center of the butterfly, just because the center of gravity is quite heavy on the bottom, so it's going to Hang. I think I'm going to put it right here actually, probably the same spot that you would if you were doing a center hanging alignment. So I'm going to put it in between after these two and put it right there. And then I'm going to rest my butterfly on the table because that makes it a little easier. And we're going to close that. Cool. So now when your butterfly hangs, it'll hang like this, just slightly sideways just in case you don't want it like so you know straight all right yay hope you guys had fun let, let us know what you think if you enjoy these craft kits and what you might like to see or do next uh, we're going to be releasing a whole bunch of new ones so follow us on instagram and facebook and send us pictures of your finished work we'd love to share them in one of our videos thanks for watching like and subscribe.